Hello guys, my name is Dalren and today I want to give you guys a video talking about Combat Rogue and the use of our three major cooldowns. Combat Rogue is played specifically by cooldowns. The cooldowns are Adrenaline Rush, Shadow Blades and Killing Spree. Being able to use all three of those cooldowns effectively as a Combat Rogue really plays up on a part of how you play Combat Rogue. This is the core example of Gauntlet Rogue, so I want to discuss it with you in the videos because I see many people making mistakes. People mixing Adrenaline Rush and Shadow Blades together, people mixing, mixing Adrenaline Rush and Killing Spree together for no reason. I'm going to teach you each, ways of, each of the ways I use all these cooldowns, how I mix them together, and give you some of the tips and tricks on the usefulness and the use of those cooldowns. This has been Dalren, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you need a rating, I'm 1900 rated Combat Rogue. Rival last season. So with that ado, let's get to the video. The very first cooldown we'll be talking about is a general rush, my favorite cooldown. It is very well applied as an opener, first of all, for comic rogues. Instead of having to get slicing this up, you just put up a adrenaline rush, cheap shot. Uh, go road of this gasser, get a revealing strike going, and just go through the rotation, stun locking your target, and the amount of damage you deal in the opener is impressive. It is almost that substantial, that of sub two rogues, except it's available to you every three minutes with different variables available. But it makes up for a really effective opener rotation, it lets you spam out some strikes as much as possible to gain an edge by allowing yourself to get as much of deeper insight as possible and letting all your procs proc, allowing for a very strong opener. Adrenaline Rush also has an effective edge outside of stealth. You can use it within uh, mid-combat, don't have to be exactly an opener. In order to get pressure going whether you're trying to get cooldowns or trinkets out of your targets, be it in arenas or battlegrounds, or when you're just simply trying to go for a kill. It replaces any usefulness needed from slice and dice, allowing you to spam away sensor strikes and reveal strikes in order to get the kill. Combination wise, I don't put Adrenaline Rush together with any other cooldown. You may try, and most people will, playing Combat Rogue, make this mistake of going Adrenaline Rush, Shadow Blades, try to burst the target down. But those two cooldowns are both in a 3 minute cooldown. So if you do mess up your opener and you do get CC'd or a target gets healed off, you just wasted your cooldowns. And in some cases, you can't use those cooldowns as a last resort in order to try to be the saving grace or the protecting the flag or protecting the friendly, as all that can go to waste. That is why I normally don't put those cooldowns anywhere together with Adrenal Rush. I generally keep Adrenal Rush separate from everything else. Now, Killing Spree is a unique ability in the whole entire game. It is unique to Combat Rogues, and I would go as far as to say it is one of the most interesting abilities out there in the, in the entire game. It makes you move with your target, striking them seven times behind their back, and making them lose the target of you once you use the ability. It is completely immune to crowd control effects, it is extremely potent, all damage within Killing Spree is increased by 50%. That is, means your auto attacks, your mango shades, even shadow blades. It is an extremely potent ability that allows you to finish off much targets or create extreme pressure at valid moments. It can also be used defensively in order to avoid damage or simply offensively paired with shadow blades to make immense amount of work out of your target. Gun spray is only as potent as you want it to be, so I like to pair it together with at least minimum insight, allowing me to deal as much damage as possible because I pair it with an unused trinket because I'm a playing a human, so I can have two trinkets. Since my racial is a trinket that breaks crowd controls. Gun spray can also be used as a finisher effectively if you're able to build the, your insight from beginning with adrenaline rush, stun locking your target, trying to avoid as many of those CCs and defensive as possible, 
and in the end finishing them off by using Shadow Blades and Killing Spree together for an effective finisher. Shadow Blades Killing Spree is one of the most effective abilities put together, counting together with the Master Procs, while Killing Spree increases all damage you deal by 50%. That accounts for your auto attacks, Master Procs, and Shadow Blades damage. It is not always wise to use it when you know enemies might have a defensive up. Because if they can negate this damage, you're left waiting for 2 and 3 minutes for those cooldowns to back up, and they're just too vital and too severe to waste. Kill Spree is very potent when it comes to swaps, as once you're building up all this momentum with procs and insight, then you're able to use Kill Spree as an easy switch to steamroll down your swap targets. I feel like for Combat Rogue Shadow Blades is the least effective ability except when it's used with others. On its own, it's not really a good opener. It's decent in keeping up and maintaining damage, but it really shines best when it combined with Kiln Spree. Otherwise, I don't really find it that useful for a combat rogue. Even though I don't find that useful, it still has its availabilities. It increases the damage at any time whenever you want it. It's almost like applying another magic effect, kind of like your poisons, except for procs with every auto attack. So when you're, up, I usually use it if I am building up uh, insight. Whenever I'm getting close to red insight, so my auto attacks deal the most amount of damage together combined with my master strikes. Shadow Blades on its own, I would say, isn't the greatest cooldown for combat rogues, but it does play a part, it does play a role, it does increase your damage, but I feel like effectively, utility-wise and such, it doesn't have a uniqueness like Adrenaline Rush or Killing Spree, at least whenever I play combat. Like all the other cooldowns, Shadow Blades should not be used unless it's necessary. So it has a 3 minute cooldown, it's better to save it for whenever you have a more direct and more guaranteed way of kill, uh, getting a kill on your target rather than using it at random moments and then having to wait 3 minutes for it. It was also something that should not be used really outside of combinations with other abilities. I usually use it with kill and spree as it is used well whenever you're starting pressure or you're trying to score for a kill. It can be used with a drone rush as stated earlier, but unless if it's the damage is completely deterred, if you're crowd control, the defenses go up, then it can be all to waste and you can really lose some of your most impressive and most valuable cooldowns. One of the most interesting abilities, or passives more or less, that a combat has, which is acquired at level 50, is called Restless Blades. Your damaging finish moves reduce the remaining cooldown of your general rush, kill spree, redirect, shadow blades, and sprint by 2 seconds per combo point. So all three major cooldowns, the general rush, shadow blades, and kill spree, can have their cooldowns reduced by spending combo points with eviscerates. Those are the main uh, abilities that you can, you, you can use as an offensive uh, combo point spender and through your damage and finishing moves which is eviscerate you're able to reduce the cooldown of your major cooldowns I just again discussed adrenaline rush shadow blades and killing spree by spending those combo points on eviscerate so keep that in mind some of the targets that can be eviscerated easily are stuff like shaman totems that don't have a glyph for extra health uh, decoy totems from shamans if they do run the glyph and even Siphons, in order to be able to kill them really quickly, just mark for death eviscerate. No, you, you don't even need have a need to put a reveal strike on them. And by using this mechanic within the game, you are able to reduce the cooldowns of your major cooldowns. Uh, again, discuss adrenaline, shadow blades, and kill spree in order to get them up quicker and in order to use them as more often as possible. While the combat row concept is a little bit different compared to assassination or subtlety, assassination having high damage with or without cooldowns, and subtlety having a strong opener and strong high burst potential whenever you do have cooldowns up, combat differs from it with the inside mechanic and its own rotation, the use of restless blades, the use of the three major cooldowns. It is definitely something not easy to pick up on, but. I'm here to try to make as many videos as best possible to explain how to do those different things within the spec. 
If you guys want me to cover anything else, leave me a comment below and I will try to cover it to the best of my abilities. This has been Dalo and giving you guys a presentation of how to use combat rogues uh, cooldowns the most effective way possible in order to get the most benefit out of it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. This has been Dalo and I'll see you guys in the next one.